What I have next to me is a real human fetus. Because one of the most amazing things about human anatomy and physiology is the story about how the body actually came to be. Because starting from one cell and developing all the way into a full body made up of trillions of cells is absolutely ridiculous. And to help us with this story today, we are going to show you the fetus so that we can talk about what it takes to get from that one cell at conception through some of the most vulnerable stages of development all the way up to becoming you. So let's take a look at the fetus. But let me quickly address the elephant or the lip in the room here. I apologize if this destroyed lip of mine is a little distracting. You're more than welcome to make fun of me for it in the comments below. My friend Victor decided he wanted to show me how powerful and robust his deltoid and underlying greater tubercle were when we were playing basketball the other night. So you know what? You can actually give him a little bit of grief in the comments too. But anyway, let's take a look at the fetus. Look how amazing this body is. You can see development of the limb anatomy, the digits, male genital structures, and even the umbilical cord flowing into the placenta. And isn't it remarkable that all of us were this small at some point while we were developing inside of mom? But again, what is even more remarkable is that we started even smaller than this. This is an ovary, and here is a testis. During the middle of the female sex cycle, also known as the menstrual cycle, ovulation takes place. And during ovulation, the ovary typically releases one egg or ovum. Sometimes a female can hyperovulate, and the ovary can release more than one egg, and that is how you end up with something, say, like fraternal twins, two separate eggs fertilized. But most often, one egg gets released every cycle, with the average cycle being about 28 days. What's also crazy to think about is that the ovum only lasts about 24 hours. So a lot of my students, when they first learn this, they think, okay, well, how in the world does anybody ever get pregnant if you only have a 24-hour window? Well, this is only part of the story, because if you've ever watched our channel in the past, you may know that I don't usually refer to sperm cells as just sperm cells. I usually refer to them as pesky little sperm cells, because those pesky little sperm cells can last three to five days in the female reproductive tract. So you can see how this would widen that window for pregnancy to occur. Now, what is also interesting about the sperm and the ovum is that they are kind of just half cells. And what I mean by that is they're considered haploid cells, which means they contain half the genetic information. Or in other words, the ovum and sperm only contain a single set of 23 chromosomes. So in a way, they're not a full cell with all the genetic information until the sperm fertilizes the egg, which is then called a zygote. And now you have a full diploid cell with 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 total chromosomes. And this is what is so incredible to me. And I'm obviously a bit of a nerd with this stuff, but even after teaching anatomy and physiology for nearly 18 years and working with many patients over the years, my mind is still just kind of blown that this actually works. Us starting as one cell, and then that one cell has all the information it needs to become you, to develop into nervous tissue, creating your brain and spinal cord, creating your bones, muscles, skin, and your internal organs like your kidneys, liver, heart, and everything else. It really is a biological marvel. Many people will also often wonder when certain structures or organs develop, but it kind of depends on what you exactly mean by that, because development is quite complex and things are developing simultaneously. For example, on day 18 or 19, the heart will start to develop and even start to beat by the end of the third week but it takes until about the seventh or eighth week for all four chambers to form. And again, since we're geeking out about all this, imagine this, just a tiny miniaturized heart inside of the fetus. Because at this point, this particular fetus would, for the most part, have a fully formed heart. As we estimate, he's about 26 to 30 weeks along, just entering into that third trimester. And we actually have another video about the details and the mystery surrounding this fetus and how he came into our lab, and I'll link that at the end of the video. But let me give you some important developmental points to consider for each trimester. The first trimester is the most critical stage of development, as this is when all the major organ systems start to form, and because of this extensive and widespread developmental activity, this is the trimester when the developing human is the most vulnerable to the effects of things like drugs, radiation, microbes, or infections. The second trimester is characterized by the nearly complete development of the organ systems. And by the end of this stage, the fetus, like the one we have viewed today, shows the majority of the distinctive human characteristics. 
The third trimester represents a period of rapid fetal growth, when the weight of the fetus doubles. And during the early stages of the third trimester, most of the organ systems become fully functional. And let's also talk about the terminology that we use to describe human development. The term fetus is sometimes disliked by people. Maybe it's just because of how it sounds, or maybe it feels less human to some, but it's actually just a very specific term to describe a stage in the human developmental process. For example, weeks one to eight are referred to as the embryonic period, and we refer to that developing human as an embryo. And generally people kind of think of embryo as a cute name, but it's different for some with the term fetus. But the fetal period is from weeks nine to 38, and we refer to that developing human as a fetus. And the fetal period ends when someone is born, and then they call that human a neonate or a newborn. And then there's terms like infant, toddler, childhood, adolescent, etc. So again, we just have these terms to describe the human developmental stages. I don't know if that helps, and admittedly, it's not like I would walk up to my pregnant sister or pregnant friend and say, hey, so how's that fetus doing? I still usually just say baby, but in science classes and in the lab, we try to use the terms that represent those stages in human development. So hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of a different perspective on the term, because fetus actually just means offspring. The other thing I also hope is that this gave you some extra understanding for how amazing this process is, and that it actually works properly most of the time. And I also want to express how grateful we are to the people that are willing to donate their bodies to science and education so that we can appreciate our bodies and life even more. And of course, it wouldn't be an Institute of Human Anatomy video if I didn't get a chance to say how excited I am about one of my favorite lifelong learning tools, and that is Brilliant. Brilliant.org is an amazing interactive online learning platform for STEM subjects, and I really believe it is one of the best and most fun, engaging ways to learn math, science, and computer science. I've been using Brilliant for almost two years now, and it has definitely helped me to refine and sharpen past skills, as well as develop new ones. I recently started one of their new lessons called Exploring Data Visually, which is all about analyzing and interpreting data from visualizing charts and graphs, which has definitely been helpful for me. Plus, Brilliant is constantly adding more of these lessons each and every month, so you'll definitely find lessons and courses that are applicable to you no matter where you are on your educational journey. So if you're interested in checking out this amazing learning platform, go to brilliant.org slash IHA to start a free 30-day trial, plus the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. We'll also include that information and the link in the description below. Thanks for watching our Crazy Anatomy videos, everyone. Like and subscribe if you feel the need. And of course, leave some comments below. Let us know what you thought of the video, and we'll see you next time.